Hi guys, I thought I would take the time to uh, give you guys an update on how I've been getting on with the uh, new tank uh, since the transfer. Uh, first off, I must say that I'm pleasantly surprised on how smooth the process has been. There wasn't any loss of any corals or um, other livestock during the um, initial time after the transfer, uh, which was a huge relief since that's always a worry when you do these uh, really drastic changes like uh, switching tanks. I did deal with some fluctuating uh, nutrients. Uh, during the first week uh, they were basically zero, both nitrates and phosphates. And after about say eight or nine days, my nitrate shot up to about 25, which I think it's uh, quite high, uh, which led to a fairly significant uh, diatom outbreak, uh, both on the uh, sand and on the uh, glass. I think the two biggest contributing factors to this was that I had some bacteria die off during the actual transfer phase, and also that I basically increased my water volume to uh, double the amount overnight. To rectify this, I used a bunch of products to uh, increase the uh, biodiversity in my tank. Um, I think the most significant ones that I used were uh, Life Source from Aquaforest. It's uh, something akin to uh, Miracle Mud, which is basically mud from the ocean, uh, which brings in a lot of goodies. I also implemented uh, aquaforest biofill uh, in a reactor. Uh, biofill is basically um, media that has already been colonized by beneficial bacteria. And as soon as I put that reactor online, I could see a marked drop in uh, nitrates. Well, other than that, I don't really have any complaints. Uh, the transfer has been really smooth. I know that uh, a lot of you guys want to see how my sump is looking. So let's dive right in. So this is the other mess that we've got going on right now. Uh, I used to have the old sump a little bit to the right. Uh, you can see some holes there. That's where the plumbing came in and then it went down and into the sump. Um, I basically just threw everything in the sump um, just to get everything up and going. Uh, didn't really care much, much about making it look pretty or anything. Uh, that's the uh, next stage in this journey. <laughs> um, as you can see right here, uh, I have a cabinet up here, which I will be extending. Uh, so we'll, we'll also be covering this new sump and put some LED bars and stuff under there as well uh, for just illumination purposes. So in terms of what we've got going on here, um, so here's the plumbing. Uh, it enters here. The main and emergency drain goes in here, into here. This clearance broke on me um, a couple of uh, days ago, so I haven't uh, been able to fix it yet. I think the motor burned out. Uh, this is just some uh, uh, cheap refugium light that I mounted I had lying around. Uh, I'm gonna find a better and more permanent solution, uh, but it seems to be going the Kato quite well. Uh, it wasn't so. Fairly small ball when I started, and yeah, it's reached the sur surface now, so seems to be doing all right. Uh, here we go. Uh, we've got some Aquaforest life source down there, uh, just to increase biodiversity. Uh, here we have some proper live rock, uh, again, to increase biodiversity. I might do something with this section and use it as a frag section in the future once the tank stabilized a bit. Uh, but for now, I think I need the extra rock in here and also some like filter media and stuff. Uh, I recently got this 110 watt UV mounted. Uh, it seems to be doing great. I used to have a Deltec 39 watt, which is way underpowered for this tank. And I also think this is kind of underpowered. So I've been debating about perhaps adding a second unit. So I'll be then running a total of uh, 220 watts, which should be sufficient for a tank this size. Here's the uh, weird placement of my probes. Uh, they'll be going in the back, uh, but again, oh, the ATO, ATO kicked on, great. Uh, but again, um, this is just, uh, everything is a placeholder here, basically. 
this is the skimmer. It's a uh, Bubble King Superman 250 RD3 Speedy, I believe. Uh, it's doing all right. Uh, the skim, it smells like living death, so that's why I'm running some carbon on the lid. Uh, this is my old tune skimmer, uh, which I've converted into a ozone reactor. So I run the ozone into here, uh, but you can see there's nothing going into here at the moment because my ozone generator broke after about three weeks of use, so that was kind of annoying. This is a Aquaforest media reactor filled with uh, biofill, uh, which really helped during the uh, initial phases uh, when I transferred everything. And there's also some carbon uh, in there just to polish the water a little bit. And in the return section, I'm using a Deltec KM500 Kalkwasser Stir, uh, which is continuously driven Kalkwasser, and a Max Beck. I believe it's called a turbine duo or something like that. Oh, and the uh, colic water reactor is fed by this Grotech 480 something something SP, I believe it's called. And I ran RO line in the ceiling, it goes here and into my mixing bins right here. So I don't really have to uh, worry too much about uh, uh, it running out of water. Uh, and I also have uh, just these things, they fill up automatically um, once a week. Here's the tank under full spectrum lighting uh, with most of the T5s kicked on. One negative thing that happened, um, say a couple of days ago, was that I actually lost my Morsh Idol, uh, which I've had for about one and a half years at this point. Um, and for a very stupid reason, unfortunately. I was feeding the fish, uh, and then I came down an hour later just to check on the tank, and I saw the idol hanging out uh, in a corner, looking very lethargic, and uh, his balance was way off. I could also see some small scrapes on his snout. So what I deduced is that something probably freaked him out, um, which made him run into the glass or a rock or something with some uh, neurological damage as a result of that. I tried to save him, um, turned off all the lights and just so that he could chill out basically. But uh, unfortunately, when I turned the lights on the following day, uh, it was gone. So that was a extremely frustrating way to lose such a great fish. I will be getting another one, uh, provided I can find a specimen that looks good. Um, I'm prepared that it'll take some time. On a positive note, I've um, actually ordered one of my dream fish, which is a blue-spotted ribbon-tailed stingray, uh, which should be arriving uh, within a month. I have my uh, roots in uh, keeping a predatory fish, so it's going to be very fun to uh, have an actual predator in this tank. I know that it's a very challenging fish, uh, but I think I'm up to the task, or at least I'm hoping I am. Um, since I have a lot of experience with large predators, um, which have uh, fairly similar requirements uh, to this one. I will also be starting work on the cabinetry of the tank uh, to make it look like nice and pretty. I'm pretty sick of uh, looking at the uh, bare wood here. <laughs> Other stuff in regards to the tank is that I uh, see that my alkalinity uptake has finally started to increase. Um, initially, I was only dosing Kalkwasser, um, by my caulk stirrer, but now uh, my uptake has surpassed the uh, amount I can dose with caulk washer. So I've uh, started do dosing uh, balling uh, again as well, which is great. So you can see that the corals are um, starting to settle in. I've also been trying to optimize the flow in the tank. Um, I could see that I had some dead spots, so I moved my two uh, max spec gyres to the back of the tank. Uh, which seem to have uh, helped a lot. I can see a lot more polyp extension on the SPS, for example. In terms of stuff that I will be adding to the tank, um, the first step is that I will be adding a phytobreeder from Grotech, and I will be dosing phytoplankton daily. That should have benefits both in terms of uh, coral nutrition, uh, pH, and uh, nutrients control. 
uh, basically just trying to keep the uh, tank as natural as possible. I think that's it for this update. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or uh, if I missed anything, just post them down in the comments. I try to reply to every comment I get. If you want more frequent updates from me, you'll find me on Instagram at Viking Reefing, where I post daily. Be safe, and thank you so very much for watching. Have a good one.